Food allergies can be a big problem. I know that for a fact because if I were to drink this, I would end up in the hospital. So to find out what they are and what we can do about them, I am here in Charlestown, Massachusetts to talk to Wayne Schreffler, a doctor and researcher at the Center for Immunology and Inflammatory Diseases at Massachusetts General Hospital. So I'm unusual in that this bottle of milk is kind of scary to me. <laughs> right. Um, most people can drink this without a problem, but if I drank this whole bottle of milk, I could die. Probably much less than that whole bottle, right? What, why is that? <laughs> Well, you were very unlucky, Adam. So, uh, you know, you, your immune system uh, has recognized this uh, as for, um, you know, reasons that I can't fully explain, but we can kind of tackle as a threat, as, you know, you've made an immune response to this as though um, it's a pathogen, essentially. The way I understand an allergy is that when you ingest something or breathe something or whatever that your body <clears throat> doesn't get along with, it actually gets attacked the same way that a flu virus would get attacked in your body. Your, your, yeah. your immune system is going after it as if it's something that's really bad for you. Right. Similar, um, not exactly the same. So, you know, your uh, immune system kind of um, uh, qualifies different threats uh, in different ways and makes a, you know, an immune response that's appropriate to that. So, for example, when you get a flu shot or when you're exposed to a bacterial infection, you make a kind of antibody response that's appropriate for defending you against that infection when, uh, although it doesn't happen so much now in westernized societies, you get infected with a parasitic worm, you make a qualitatively distinct kind of immune response that uh, is characterized by producing a different kind of antibody, IgE antibody. That's the class of antibody and the kind of immune response that's also associated with allergic responses or allergies. So my body actually has antibodies that are somewhat similar to parasite antibodies for milk. That's right. So people have antibodies for all sorts of things that they've caught throughout their life. I just caught milk at some point and you, now you, it's coming after me. Right yeah, now. yeah. You, you, caught, you caught milk. You had, a, you had an immune response to the various proteins that are present in milk that uh, mimics the response that someone might have appropriately to a parasitic infection. So are, are you saying that you know the first time that anybody eats something that's soy-based <laughs> or anybody eats something that's peanut-based, their body has the chance to either ignore it or attack it? And for people who have a predisposition to allergies, they might get attacked? Yeah. So again, that predisposition puts you at greater risk. And then um, other factors, um, you know, maybe you had a, a viral gastroenteritis at, at a critical time when milk was you know, first introduced, or maybe that early milk exposure was actually when you were still in the womb yeah. or um, being breastfed. Um, we don't know exactly all of those risks, but, uh, but yeah, you, the normal thing to do is you know, to be tolerant and uh, your immune system recognized it as a problem. So you're an allergy researcher, but you're also a doctor who actually yeah. sees patients and works with people with allergies. And right. you're <coughs> from both of those directions looking at ways that we can maybe do something about this, right? right. Could I ever not be allergic to milk? I hope so. Um, and yeah, it's an area of very active research. Probably the most promising um, you know, sort of thread uh, in research um, currently, or at least closest to clinic, is something called oral immunotherapy, where we intentionally introduce, you know, beginning with very small amounts and gradually increasing it, um, the offending allergen to hopefully induce tolerance. So basically people get used to it if you introduce yeah. a little at a time? Well, there are two you know, um, potential mechanisms, and, and uh, where the field is right now is still trying to sort out how effectively we're inducing one or both. So um, there is this concept of desensitization, so that you know, when these mast cells that I mentioned before that have the allergic antibody on them um, are chronically exposed and sort of with, in a graded fashion and then continuously exposed, they seem to be somewhat disarmed or energized is the jargon term. So you hit them over and over again and they, they yeah. get a little weaker. And they're kind of, of refractory. They don't respond so well. Um, that, we think, probably corresponds to you know, uh, protection against accidental ingestions so long as you're regularly on immunotherapy. The second part of it is really, you know, are we actually you know, making that person truly non-allergic, truly tolerant, so that even if they're not taking their daily sip of milk, um, that when they're exposed a month later, they're still, um, they still don't react. And that's really not yet been shown by the studies that have published uh, so far. That's the goal ultimately, right? We really want basically to make people non-allergic, like you know, um, anyone else. Like you know, I can 
drink this right now and enjoy it very much without a problem. And as long as I don't, you know, kiss you or something, right. it'll be fine. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much for the work that you're doing and for oh, telling us about it. Great. My pleasure.